<sighs> Manchester United defeated at the Amex by Brighton and Hove Albion. Five losses in our last six league encounters and the United Twins need to speak about it. Shout out to everybody inside, including yourself, CM. Brighton and Hove Albion 2, Manchester United 1. A, a game that can only be summarised as a fixture where mistakes cost us when it really mattered. Just speaking chronologically, the first half had a, a lot of positives and, and that is where I'll say and give credit where credit is due. This team does, does seem more confident and more intentional in possession. The odd mistake does happen from back to front, but there has been a stark improvement in that department overall in comparison to previous seasons under Eric Ten Hag. Now, it has taken a long time to do that. When we were in control of the game, a couple of chances that came to mind was the Ahmad miss from Delo's left-footed cross. Difficult chance to execute, perhaps maybe a right-footed or headed finish instead of the left and the 3v2 which was derailed by I think Amaz pass that was behind Rashford he may or, or may not have been offside but still when Danny Welbeck scored his 100th club goal uh, I spoke about his good game last week and, and there was a continuation unless there was a, a series of mistakes leading up to the goal as a cross came in from Joao Pedro Harry Maguire hesitates and allows the ball to flash across goal a bit tougher for Mashraoui to deal with. As Matoma collects the ball, you, you see complete ball watching from everybody. Mashraoui charges out a little. Maguire glances to the edge of the area, doesn't really commit to marking or is aware of the danger behind. Licha picks up Minte at the back post and, and Welbeck was free in the centre. No communication, a failure to refocus and, and eradicate danger until it's simply too late to deal with. And that wasn't the only occasion where we sunk a ship. Yeah, and the disappointing part of this performance was after we conceded the goal. Even more so in the second half. Manchester United weren't able to grab a hold of the game as they did prior. And with all of the substitutions that came our way, no waves of momentum were sustained. In fact, it, it was Brighton who threatened the most. Hitting the crossbar through that man again, Danny Welbeck. James Milner had a chance cleared near enough off the line by Diogo Delo also. Luckily enough for us, it was against the run of play when Amagiallo was able to equalise via a deflection off of Van Hecker. And down the line, it could have been so much more had it not been for one of the most unluckiest offside goals you'll see all season long. We are presenting with a golden counter-attack. Spaces exposed in wide areas and Ahmad and Bruno Fernandes combined to flash the ball towards Garnacho at the back post. His strike was tapped in on the line by a sliding Joshua Zerks day off his knee. The curve ball was that Zerks who was ahead of the ball, therefore goal disallowed. Still 1-1. One, one. It was one of those moments where the outcome of the game was probably predetermined from that point onwards. Brighton's winner came in a period of the game when it was really open. Both teams seemingly were going for it and from a corner kick, five minutes into the seven and in on it breaks for Simon Adingra. After a couple of tries, and instead of playing him down the line, he's able to faint onto his right foot and quickly deliver a cross towards the back post. And boy, oh boy, was the defending at the back post the poor then, and that's being nice. That entire sequence, you know, in crucial moments when the pressure is turned up a notch, you see, you get to see the resolve of individuals and how they collaborate as a collective. Unfortunately today, and there have been numerous occasions in the past, but today on the goals we conceded, we didn't react quick enough to minimise the chances of being punished. There's enough time to read and react. But everybody was caught in a trance as the football trickled and floated to its destiny. Our fate, on the other hand, was an unfriendly dagger settling proceedings at the Amex. So next Sunday, it doesn't get any easier for us with Liverpool as our next opponents. Oh, at the time of recording, they, have, they wouldn't have played Brentford just yet. But nonetheless, much like our record against Brighton, against Liverpool might need some work as well. Perhaps it's time to start putting into consideration tweaks to the lineup as other players get up to speed. Will Bruno and the Mount Force 9 experiment last much longer? 
Personally, as good as we've had moments over the first two games, I'd love to see a reference point embedded in from the start, like Joshua Zerxe, Rasmus Hoynem when he returns. On the left-hand side, Marcus Rashford is still a little timid. Now is it time for him to take a back seat and earn back that position, try to instill a level of anger and fire? The Jane Sancho saga seems to be continuing. And the more it does, is the less I believe there was a meaningful resolution, as once reported. Or was it all a ploy to retain his equity to be sold, as Juventus are sounding like possible suitors right now? Elsewhere, we could be expecting Manuel Agati to Manchester United's confirmation, seemingly on a loan deal with an obligation to buy and that fee of 60 million euros has stayed consistent through it all. And that may well be our final piece of business for incomings at least this transfer window. How do you all feel about that? Let us know in the comments. Have your say on the Brighton game and of what you learned. Hit a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. Share to your friends and frenemies. And until the next time, we'll see you lots in a bit.